All right, welcome to another episode of Tech and Swords. My name is Marcus Fernstrom, and today we're going to talk about MySQL databases. I'm going to cover how to connect the database, how to perform select statements, and we're also going to insert data using parameterized queries. Now, the drivers can sometimes be a bit of a pain to get a hold of, so for convenience, I put them on my GitHub. I'll put a link to this in the video description as well. If you're on a Windows system, you can just go here, click on Windows, grab this DLL file, and put it in the same place as your executable file. For Linux, it's the same thing. You just can grab the files, put them in the same directory, with one small caveat. On Windows, you just have to place the DLL, and then Free Pascal is going to automatically load that driver as needed. On a Linux system, it's not quite that straightforward. You're also going to need to load them manually. Now, it's very simple to do. You simply need to include SQL DB lib, and you need to create a DB loader, a T-SQL database library loader. This literally is just designed to tell the application where to find the database drivers. So you can see I'm on a Windows system, so I'm doing this cross-platform style, so I have these if defs, which means if we're compiling for a Linux system, go ahead and do this stuff. Otherwise, just skip it. Let's say we are compiling this for a Linux system. You set up your DB loader, you know, you instantiate it. You say this is a MySQL 5.7, because that is the drivers we're using. And for library name, you want to put the full path to where your client file.so. in this case 20 is. And with enabled true, it's going to go ahead and actually load the drivers. Everything else is the same for Windows and Linux, so we're just going to go ahead. So for working with MySQL, you're going to need SQL DB and MySQL 57 con, and that's MySQL 5.7. We're going to need a connection, a query, and a transaction. We're going to start with doing a select statement, and then we're going to do a insert statement. The absolute first thing we're going to have to do is set up the connection. And it's pretty straightforward. We're going to start with the uh, connection itself. A connection equals create. And we're also going to set up the query. as well. Let's set up a try finally, just to make sure that when everything is said and done, this is cleaned up. Okay, so let's start with the actual connection. The host name is localhost. The port is 3306. This is the default MySQL database port. created a user called TS and the password is TS password. Please do use more secure passwords on your production systems. And I'm setting the default database. Okay. So we're not quite ready. That is just for the connection itself. We do need to hook up a few more pieces. So let's hook up the transaction. it and we're going to set the owner as a connection and now in a connection we're going to specify that the transaction to use is a transaction we're almost ready and for our query we're going to specify that the database is what's connected in a connection now we're ready to actually launch the connection, which is done with a connection dot open. So assuming that does not fail, that means we have an active connection to the MySQL database. So the first thing we're going to do is select statements. So to do that, we can do this, select wildcard from members. Uh, and for 
for a select statement, you can just use a query.open and to loop through the result set, use while dot dot in the file do begin. So we're going to output the first name and last name of every member in our database. And to access it, we do a query dot field by name. And I've called this first name. And then let's just add a space. And we're also want to grab last name as a string as well. And then we need to forward to the next record by going a query dot next. And when all is said and done, we go ahead and close the query. And let's just make sure that the window stays open for a second. Now, if this works, we should get some data out. Let me run this. We have myself, John Wick, and Conan the Barbarian. Let me zoom in. So there are three records in the database. So let's go ahead and do an insert statement. We're going to add one more person to this. We'll do that before our select so we can immediately see if it works. So right after our connection at open, because we do need to have the open connection, let's do query.sql.text equals we're going to insert into members. We're going to insert first name as well as last name. And we're going to use parameterized queries. So the first parameter is going to be first name. And the second one is going to be last name. Now we got to tell the query to use prepared statements. And then we need to start specifying the parameters. So the a param name is this value. So first name as string specifying the database field type. And it's going to me wonder name, which matches this uh, string equals woman. So we're going to add Wonder Woman to our record here. Now to actually execute the statement, we need to use dot exec SQL, so execute SQL, but it's not enough to do just execute the SQL. We also need to tell the transaction that we are committing this. So why are we committing this? Well, in the case you're performing several SQL statements in a row and they depend on each other, let's say you're performing three and the third one fails. And if the third one fails, you don't want any of them to have any effect on your database. You can roll back. You can ignore those changes because they haven't actually happened yet. So now if this works, we are first inserting a new member, Wonder Woman, and then we are doing a select all from members. So if this works, we should now see the same list as before, but with Wonder Woman. And there she is. Why are we using parameterized queries? Well, first and foremost, it's for security, but it's also for performance. What is this doing is creating what's called a template the template is sent first to the database and then the value. So the database itself is actually making sure that the uh, values are of the correct type and length and all of that stuff before it will accept it. So if we were to insert some numbers here, the database is just going to come back and say, nope, that's incorrect, sorry. And it is also how you protect your code against injection attacks. There you go, a crash course in how to use MySQL database select data and insert data. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe for more videos about free Pascal and Lazarus. You can also find my articles on Medium and you're always welcome to reach out to me through LinkedIn. If you want to support the creation of these videos, I have a Patreon as well. Links are all in the description.
Also a shout out to Helena for letting me use her music in this video.